Fellas, we're talking swords today because, yes, the flawless reward for this weekend is Solas Scar. Now, I was curious about this sword for a number of reasons. Number one, it does solar damage. Number two, it can roll with chain reaction, meaning, yes, you can spawn things like War Mind Cells, which, of course, we're going to be talking about today. In a little more depth, we'll probably go into a build. And number three, considering that this is the adept version of this sword, it can slot on mods like Adept Impact and Adept Big one spec. I was really curious to know which one of these mods is actually the better mod. A dead impact quite literally just adds on more impact by plus 10. A dead big one spec is just major spec and boss spec merged together. It's still a 7.8% buff, but it offers that ease of use by giving you that damage buff against any higher health target in front of you. I do want to mention though that the adept version doesn't really mean all that much. I mean, it's nice. It's an added cherry on top, but from my experience with this sword, just a regular version of the sword with chain reaction is so much fun to use. Now, this does fall into that caster frame archetype. Essentially, a bolt caster. You can launch a heavy projectile attack. Also, attacks partially bypass elemental shields. And of course, the heavy attacks themselves are stronger when you have full sword energy. Kind of interesting. The solar animation itself, when it makes contact with that heavy attack, actually doesn't look like our normal solar attacks. It has more of like a flamey look to it, similar to like Dragon's Breath. Like very similar. So similar that I almost feel like Dragon's Breath is already in the game and we're just waiting to get it and i've seen tiku's divination i've seen many other weapons sunshot a host of other solar weapons that have like d2 solar animations i just find it very strange here that solar scar has essentially the same flaming animation as dragon's breath i might be looking a little too deep but hell who wouldn't want dragon's breath back now the role that i got today and this is by far my best role although it's not the best role. Mine came with Jagged Edge for that bump there in Impact, although I will say, it's not the say all end all, especially on this particular role. Mine also came with Balanced Guard, Relentless Strikes, landing three light attack hits within a short time frame, grants you sword ammo, as well as Chain Reaction. Each final blow with this weapon creates elemental damage explosion. Now, considering that this does solar damage, when you combine this with the mod Wrath of Rasputin, you can actually spawn a Warmind Cell. Tiku's Divination does the same exact thing. Sunshot does it. Some weapons can do it with more ease. And again, when it comes to solo weapons, we're always trying to get it to the level of like Ikelos weapons. Like obviously Ikelos weapons or Seventh Seraph weapons are the best when it comes to generating those Warmind cells. What we like to do with these solar based weapons is we want to get it close to that level of consistency. To me, Tiku's Divination does it better than any of them, even better than Sunshot. What makes Tiku so good is that it can self proc on the same target. It doesn't require a target walking into that AoE explosion, but instead can actually self proc on a single target, on a single kill. Surprisingly, Solas can do the exact same thing. It could spawn a Warmont Cell on an individual single kill. Again, this is extremely aggravating with other solar based weapons as you almost have to group the enemies together get the aoe explosion off on them and hope the game recognizes that it's solar splash damage that's doing damage to those enemies to then proc a warmind cell again since tq's divination and its exotic trait allows it itself proc on a single target that's no problem and i was pleasantly surprised to see that solas did the exact same thing maybe it has something to do with like dragon's breath same fire type animation who knows now this is by far my best role and we actually start breaking down the damage numbers i wanted to see all right where do we stand in regards to this mod face-off adept impact versus spec mod or, or big one spec which is the best one well without any mods our heavy attack was doing 4891 obviously a lot more than that i think it hits for like eight ticks it's possible that's even more there's just a lot of damage numbers there with an adept impact mod that actually cranks the damage up to 5072 this is actually a four percent increase there in damage with that plus 10 impact now with a big one spec or a major spec or a boss spec whatever this is actually increases our damage by 7.8%, which actually results in the damage being 5,271, which is actually more than, yes, the Adept Impact, which led me to the question, what the hell is the point of Adept Impact? If boss spec and major spec and all other specs outperforms it, what's the point? Well, inside of PvE, if you want increased damage against miners, as well as majors, as well as bosses, and you just want to live with that nice 4% buff, well, adept impact it is. Think of it as like a big one spec plus minor spec, but with less damage. Now, before we actually got big one spec, I would probably say that adept impact would be the way to go. Just give yourself a nice flat 4% buff amongst all enemy types. Why not? But now that we have big one spec, 
back, it's kind of hard for me to justify Adept Impact here, which is leading me to kind of lean more toward Big One Spec, as most minor enemies are going to get killed anyways from a single sword swipe. No, the only place that I feel like Adept Impact might actually show some benefit is surprisingly inside of PvP. You see, inside of PvP, a heavy attack from a sword, yes, could pretty much insta-kill a super with these. Now, don't get too crazy about it. I know that sounds great and all, but again, Black Talon can do the exact same thing with less ammo. Yes, you're burning six rounds, the whole thing, and one Kablammy Blast, which is not necessarily optimal. On top of that, the heavy attack can be a Evaded. So again, there are some risks to using this as the go-to option to shut down a super. But for more specific scenarios, you've got a guy using a super. He's coming at you. You're using a sword. You don't have time to charge up an R2 attack. You only have one option to slash him with your light attack, which normally would mean death. But no, you've prepared for this moment. Your Sola Scar, that's also adept, has been masterwork for this exact scenario. You proceed to slash at the Guardian who's rocking a super. Luckily, your role also comes with Vorpal, which allows you to do more damage not only to bosses and vehicles but also guardians with their super active and with jagged edge you do barely 191 damage now if that guardian rocking that super is five resilience or less well you're in luck but if he happens to not be rocking five resilience or less then all this preparation was for nothing so how do you fix this situation how do you make sure you get the kill with the light attack of a sword that you have no idea what i'm talking about because i don't have gameplay of this les was actually doing this from his perspective but he was doing 190 91 damage with his Vorpal weapon Solar Scar. But wait, had he had the Adept version of this weapon, he could have slotted on an Adept Impact mod, which would have enabled him to kill me in one single light attack swipe with this sword. Honestly, after just kind of observing everything, that is the only place that this is actually a truly beneficial mod. Like inside of PvE, hands down, I would go with any other spec mod, whether it's minor spec, major spec, big one spec, boss spec. I know that Adept Impact offers a 4% buff that's flat across all enemy types and that may be desirable to you but me personally big one spec just outclasses it now before we get into our build i do want to just go over like what is the exact god roll here on guard is present which stays at quick attacks immediately after swapping to the sword do additional damage unfortunately this does not have any bearing on the heavy attack which would have been nice in the past i've spoken favorably about on guard as it does offer a 30% buff, but it's only for the light attack. Hands down, if you're looking for single target damage against like bosses, Vorpal Weapon is your best option in this column. As far as the traits to utilize with it, Relentless Strikes is all right. I do find that Tireless Blade probably would have been better for how I was utilizing this chain reaction role. That's primarily because I'm just running up into a group of ants, getting a few kills off, hoping I actually get a War Mind Cell to spawn from chain reaction, and then proceed to just chain my nukes back to back. That's that to me would be the god roll. Essentially, guys, tireless blade, chain reaction all day long. All these other perks, counterattack, energy transfer, assassin blade, on guard, none of those are good options. Really, it comes down to just Vorpal and chain reaction. As far as the best blade, as well as the best guard perk, considering that you're just running into a group of enemies, getting a bunch of kills off, yes, in the past, we always went for Jagged Edge. Anything that actually buffs our impact, despite it hurting our ammo capacity and magazine, was all always a win but in this scenario we're having large amounts of ammo for ad clearing i want us to look elsewhere i want us to take a look at either hungry edge which buffs magazine and ammo capacity enduring blade despite it giving us a minus five there in impact greatly boosts our mag and ammo capacity so yeah guys in this situation kind of lean away from those high impact blades and look toward the ammo capacity and magazine boosting blades as far as the guards themselves for the longest time sword master guard was the way you had a boost there in charge time and considering that most of our other swords we were always taking advantage of their heavy attacks sword master was our go-to option the only reason why i steer away from the heavy attack on solas is purely because of the amount of ammo that it utilizes with each heavy attack so instead i would love it if we looked at either enduring guard or heavy guard both of which increase that inventory size and again for this particular build for what i'm doing i'm primarily taking advantage of the line attacks trying to conserve as much ammo as possible now as far as the build that we utilize today when it comes to war mind cells and solar based weapons everything begins with wrath of rasputin and then you just kind of branch off from there i love wrath of rasputin in combination with rage of the war mind rage of the war mind essentially allows you to add an 
additional solar damage to the explosion of a Warmind Cell, which can then reproc back in to Wrath of Rasputin, meaning you can spawn back to back Warmind Cells. Another Warmind Cell I like to rock is Burning Cells. This allows the destroying of a Warmind Cell to create a burst of solar energy that also causes enemies to burn for several seconds. For my bottom tree sunbreakers, yes, this is fantastic for chain and sunspots. I also like to take advantage of global reach. This increases that radius even more of this explosion, hitting everything in a massive radius. It's often a mod that we overlook, we just forget about it, but man, does it make a difference. And as a cherry on top, just so we can stay alive, especially consider we are using a sword, we are up close and next to our enemies, Fire Team Manic is always good, as destroying a Warmind Cell creates a burst of healing for you as well as your allies. This is essentially the same exact mod loadout that I always utilize with solar based weapons, whether it's TQ's Divination or Solar Scar here with Chain Reaction. So is this sword a sword you should be going after? Really, it's not bad. Although inside of PvE, yes, Lament is still king. And inside of PvP, if I had to choose a sword to take down a super, hands down, Black Talent is king. But for what it's being used as, as a means to create Warmind Cells and to be another weapon in our arsenal for utilizing these Warmind Cell based builds, I found that Solar Scar with Chain Reaction was very fun to use. Well, fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.